I'm reading to you from the authorized version of the scriptures. Please, at the scriptures that we will be looking at, please get your authorized version of the scriptures and follow me along word for word, verse by verse, at the scriptures that we are going to be looking at today. Beg your pardon. Um, hmm. Your servant is not doing very well health-wise right now. So please keep me in your prayers. I know that will uh, rejoice some of my enemies, but... Um, Hey, if I get out of here, yeah, you'll get me not making videos anymore, but I'll be going to some place that you, my enemies, will never see. So, but, Psalm 12. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. Yeah, most people are faithful to themselves. Hardly anyone is faithful unto the true God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ of the Scriptures. They speak vanity, every one with his neighbor. With, a flatter, with flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. Yes, politicians uh, speak with a double heart. Uh, they speak an esoteric um, language, in um, esoteric rhetoric. Okay, they are double-minded. They, uh, they say that they're for the people here in America and in uh, merry old England. They say they're for the people, but they are actually there serving their masters. And who are their masters? Who are the masters of the governments of today? Virtually all of them. Oh, that would be the Jesuit order. Okay, so just like the Catholic who is, has dual citizenship... Anyone who um, goes to the Roman Catholic Church and joins the church, uh, they are a citizen of Rome. They are considered uh, part of the Vatican. They are part of the Catholic Church. They are considered a citizen of that nation or something like that. Um, that's, you know, they have dual citizenship. They are loyal first to the Pope, Sosa, okay? And the nation that they are in, Eh, doesn't matter. Whatever the Pope says, it's number one, okay? The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips, and the tongue that speaketh proud things, who have said, With our tongue we will prevail. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? Yeah. For the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now will I arise, saith the Lord. I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them. Keep what? Them, the words, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. And where does our Lord preserve the words in the authorized version of the scriptures? The wicked walk on every side, while the vilest men are exalted. You know, as much as I uh, um, speak against mine own Jesuit nation, America, you know, my dear country, my dear friends in England, not countrymen, excuse me, um, like I said, I'm, I'm not doing well health-wise right now. Keep me in your prayers. Those of you who are truly saved of the Church of the Living God, born again, converted in England, um, your country is no better off than ours. Remember, the Jesuits first wanted England before they wanted America. And they have America. And guess what? They have your nation too there, Mr. Hidden in Lucifer's loin. They have your nation too. I know that in England they say that no Catholic will ever sit on the throne openly. But, um, you know, the queen over there, yeah, yeah, she was a uh, servant to the Vatican. Absolutely. I know there are some um, uh, British <laughs> people who think they are British Israelites who hate America all because of the American Revolution. <laughs> yeah, I've met people, uh, not, I've met someone like that who hates America due to the American Revolution, who's a British Israelite, you know. <laughs> yeah, but you know, those brethren in England, as the Lord set up Kamala Harris and Smoking Joe for judgment against this nation, oh, my dear brethren in England, of the Church of the Living God, 
The queen is dead. The queen is dead. And now, and the first time in what, 70 some odd years, something like that, y'all are going to have a king. This uh, video was sent to me by a beloved sister. And um, even though, like I said, <laughs> I'm not doing well right now, this has to be addressed. So I'm going to watch this video. I've got some points here that we're going to stop and look at some scriptures. Follow me along in the scriptures that we look at. Word for word, verse by verse. Keep me accountable. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove. Make sure I'm telling you the truth, okay? Check this out. We are all devastated by the news that we have just heard from Balmoral. The death of Her Majesty the Queen is a huge shock to the nation and to the world. Queen Elizabeth II was the rock on which modern Britain was built. Oh! <coughs> okay, you heard that one? Did you hear that one? Here, let's... Let's uh, let's go back a little here. Let's go back a little so you can hear that, okay? The world. Queen Elizabeth II was the rock on which modern Britain was built. <clears throat> Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 31 on to verse 33. For their lowercase r rock is not as r rock, capital A case r, denoting the Lord Jesus Christ our Father. Even our enemies themselves being their judges. Yes, so many say, oh, I believe in Jesus. What Jesus do you believe in? <laughs> okay. For their vine is the vine of Sodom. And of the fields of Gomorrah, their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons. <laughs> and the cruel venom of asps. Hmm. And the rock. It's not a professional wrestler. It's not Queen Elizabeth. The rock, as far as scripture is concerned, and that's what we care about. Um... 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 on to verse 5. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized, identified, in, unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Because, yeah, you don't see anything about water baptism in the Old Testament. At least not as it is written in Scripture in the New Testament. Okay? And all did eat the same spiritual meat, and all and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual, capital R, rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. Hmm. And upon this rock, I will build my church. And the name Peter means stone, not rock. I don't care what kind of foreign language lexicon you get that the Jesuits have gotten their hands on to try to, to twist uh, that, well, no, Peter actually does mean rock. I don't care what you say. I don't care what they say. What say it? The scriptures, okay? The rock is our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the rock. This woman here just blasphemed, <laughs> okay? All right? Our country has grown and flourished under her reign. Britain is the great country it is today because of her. She ascended the throne just after the Second World War. She championed the development of the Commonwealth from a small group of seven countries to a family of 56 nations spanning every continent of the world. We are now a modern, thriving, dynamic nation. Through thick and thin, Queen Elizabeth II provided us with the stability and the strength that we needed. She was the very spirit 
of Great Britain, and that spirit will endure. The very spirit of Britain. Ah, uh, interesting. Interesting. Maybe that's why some of my enemies who are from England act like women. Maybe. She has been our longest ever reigning monarch. It's an extraordinary achievement. There are uh, England's longest reigning monarch. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes. And, uh, hey, you know, you want to knock, you can go ahead and knock uh, America all day, all you want. And you're just and right to do so about America. But uh, remember, England, England is where the authorized version came out of. Okay? That's where, you know, a lot of our measurements and whatnot that we have here in America derive from England. Yes. Yes. But England, just like America, has sold out to the Vatican. You, you know, you say, well, uh, uh, that no Catholic is to be on the throne. Openly. England, just like America, sold out to the Vatican. Remember, the Jesuits wanted, the one of their crowning achievements was for the Jesuits to obtain England. They already got it, okay? England is in the pocket of the Vatican. All, I mean, and, and those of you who are truly saved, born again, converted of the Church of the Living God, are brethren in England, you know that and you admit that. Okay? It's only the devils over there in your nation who will like to uh, uh, compare which nation is the lesser of two evils. <laughs> okay? <laughs> and in reality, let's be honest, people, the lesser of the two evils of England and America, obviously, the lesser of the two evils, we're going to be honest, is merry old England. Absolutely. Absolutely. America... We, you know, hey, you search the channel here about, uh, uh, you know, how, what the Lord has had me to speak about America, about America, okay? <laughs> yeah, but I found that interesting. Okay, let's continue with this. Come on. ...to have presided with such dignity and grace for 70 years. Her, la her life of service stretched beyond most of our living memories. In return, she was loved and admired by the people in the United Kingdom and all around the world. She was loved in England and all around the world, huh? Hmm. Coming from a godly nation like England. Hmm? Godly nation like England. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just like a godly nation such as Malka, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Luke chapter 6, verse 26. Now look, brethren who are truly saved, born again, converted of England, of the church of the living God, heirs to be in the kingdom of heaven when we come back with our Lord at his second coming. Okay, anyone who is truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, when it comes to whatever nation you're in, you will recognize and accept uh, the reality that your nation does not belong to you and that actually the Vatican is the nation that rules your nation and that your politicians work for that, uh, for that nation, the Vatican. Okay? I understand the concept of patriotism. I really do. I really do. At this stage in the game, as it were, every nation, virtually every nation under heaven is in the pocket and is controlled by the Vatican. The Vatican, because the Vatican is run by Satan, and Satan has been given control of this world by our Lord Jesus Christ for judgment. But Luke chapter 6, verse 26 Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. Now that doesn't mean you go out to be a jerk, okay? Um, you follow what the scriptures say for us to do. You live according to the scriptures in this dispensation for us today. 
Uh, people are going to hate you for having the scriptures as your standard and not going to the standard of the world. Okay? You, uh, woe unto you when all men will speak well of you. Okay? By going along with what the world says, by being a people pleaser, by trying to do what makes people happy. We who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, we seek to do what makes our Lord happy by following the scriptures. Okay? That's what makes us hated. Okay? That's what makes people speak against us. Okay? And also, James 4, verse 4, you know, a little, I, I saw this this morning and like, oh, wow. <laughs> James 4, verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Huh. Now, see, a comparison, that guy over in Korea, um, whatever his name is, uh, the, the, the North Korea, I think it is, he's a dictator, and people pretty much, his people are brainwashed to believe that he is deity. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. He's against the world. He's against the world, uh, and, um, um, you know, <laughs> he is an enemy. Uh, he's against everybody, pretty much. Is that because he follows the precepts of the scriptures, that he follows the Lord Jesus Christ? No, it's because he's a delusional maniac who has deceived his people in thinking that he's a deity. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God? Just like here in America. Just like here in America. England is controlled by the Vatican. Yeah. Their rock, their rock over in England, just like here in America. You know, uh, what is that in Deuteronomy chapter 32 again? Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 32. Uh, we want verses 16 on to verse 20. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 16 on to verse 20. <coughs> And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and this people will rise up and go whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land, whither they go to be among them, and will forsake me and break my covenant which I have made with them. Then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them, and I will hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured. Many evils, sh uh, evils and troubles shall befall them, so that they will say in that day, Are not these evils come upon us, because our God is not among us? And I will surely hide my face in that day from all the evils which they shall have wrought, in that they are turned unto other gods. Now therefore, write ye this song for you, and teach it to the children of Israel. Children of Israel, see... Doctrinally, this is talking about the children of Israel for instruction and righteousness, a nation that turns its back on God. England, yes! At one time, yes! England was a godly nation. Absolutely! Absolutely! I, I give it that credit. Uh, it was from England again where the, the Lord chose to bring out the scriptures from. Okay? Absolutely! Absolutely! But is England a godly nation now? Yes, they are, the little G-God of this world, just like America. Okay? Now therefore write ye this song, and teach it to the children of Israel. Put it in their mouths, that the song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel. For when I shall have brought them into the land which I swear unto their fathers, that floweth with milk and honey, and they shall have eaten and filled themselves and wax and fat, then will they turn unto other gods, and shall turn unto other gods, and serve them. And provoke me and break my covenant. Now, doctrinally, this is for the Jews. Talking about the Jews. Instruction and righteousness holds for a nation that turns its back against God. Okay? Well, let's continue here. She has been a personal inspiration to me and to many Britons. Her devotion to duty is an example to us all. Earlier this week, at 96 she remained determined to carry out her duties as she appointed me as her 15th Prime Minister. Throughout her life, she's visited more than 100 countries. 
Children are your oppressors and women rule, rule, rule over you. Trees. And she has touched the lives. Hey, hey, hey. I know. I'm, a, I'm an American, okay? I know how evil my country is, okay? You know, uh, smoking Joe's the puppet man and the one that the Jesuits really um, have uh, put a lot of emphasis on is that basket case uh, Kamala Harris, our eventual president. Yeah, I know, I know. ...of millions around the world. In the difficult days ahead, we will come together with our friends across the United Kingdom, the Commonwealth and the world to celebrate her... Friends of the world! Mm. ...her extraordinary lifetime of service. It is a day of great loss, but Queen Elizabeth II leaves a great legacy. Today the crown passes as it has done for more than a thousand years, to our new monarch, our new head of state, His Majesty, King Charles III. King Charles III, huh? King Charles, oh boy. King Charles, the same King Charles, who at that COP convention 26, uh, check one of the one of only two links that are going to be in the description box of this video. Uh, is he amongst us now? Please watch that video. We go over the video where Prince Charles, then Prince Charles, made the statement more or less about how when the son of perdition comes on the scene, that uh, he is in favor of giving the son of perdition trillions of dollars. Okay. That same Prince Charles who made that statement about the son of perdition and give how the whole world all will be giving ought to give him trillions of dollars or something like that. Watch, please, watch the video in the description box. Is he among us? That's going to be only one of two in there, okay? Because there are plenty of links in the video, uh, is he among us, okay? Please watch that. That is going to be the inevitable king of England, who, and this this was, I found interesting, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Ecclesiastes 4, Ecclesiastes 4. Now, what is the significance of all this? I, I, I don't really know, but it is something to take notice of. Just like when uh, the presidential elections in America will uh, come uh, be in place, when, they, uh, when the Jesuits try to push Donald Trump again. Okay, against, I believe, Kamala Harris. Okay, but uh, Ecclesiastes 4, verses 13 and 14. Better is a poor and wise child than an old and foolish king who will, who will no more be admonished. A poor and wise child. Blessed are the poor, for they shall inherit the earth. And wise, having wisdom, the fear of the Lord. Better is a poor who is blessed and wise child who fears the Lord than an old and foolish king. Foolish, uh, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And to behave foolishly is to behave, to be foolish is to behave as if you are saying in your heart, there is no God. For out of prison he cometh to reign. Whereas also he that is born in his kingdom becometh poor. Mm. Mm. Now, the poor there in context is not obviously better as a poor and wise child. The poor here is actually talking poor as destitution, not poor as, uh, you know, poor being, you know, like the Lord says, blessed are the poor. They're poor because they are uh, broken over the state of the world and waiting for their king. This poor is a different type of poor. And he cometh out of, for out of prison he cometh to reign. Prince Charles has been there in the background for a long time. Held up. And now the queen is dead. And here on the show, England is going to have their new king who openly gives, who openly gives his support for the son of perdition when he arrives on the scene. And of course... In order for him to do that, we, the Church of the Living God, need to be redeemed first. There are some out there who don't believe in the doctrine which is called the doctrine of eminence. 
Now, granted, granted, in the first centuries, when things were being established, no, doctrine of eminence, obviously. But nowadays? Oh, yeah, boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We've talked about that plenty of times. Plenty of times. You can search the channel for that. Okay? And, of course, um, Romans chapter uh, 13. Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13, verses 1 on to verse 7. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Yes! Just like in America, Kamala Harris and Smoking Joe were ordained of God. Because they are godly, no, be for judgment against this nation. Unfortunately, you, my English brethren of the Church of the Living God, and even you, my English, uh, British, Israelite enemies over there, your king has been, uh, what? Has uh, been established by God. Why? For judgment against your nation. Mm-hmm. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. And that's what government is there for. Okay, and this is in context of a good government. Okay, give you an example of what we're talking about. Okay, um, in the times of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Roman government was far more just than the English and definitely the American governments. Okay, and they are there for the uh, punishment of evildoers. You know, those who break the law. But see, what has happened is there are nations, uh, America and England, that call evil good and good evil. Okay? And the governments that are in position today are set up to support that man of sin, the son of perdition, when he comes on the scene. But we, the church of the living God, have to get out of the way first. Be redeemed, resurrected. Okay? Okay? Yes. Wherefore ye must needs be subject not only for wrath, but for all, all, but also for conscience sake. For this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. You're supposed to pay your taxes uh, and stuff like that. Yes, you are. And this is in context of a good government, even a government that gives credence to the fear of the Lord, that fear God. Now, America and England will say that in lip service, but in works, they deny him. Okay? Absolutely. The governments that are in, on the earth today are set up to support that man of sin, the son of perdition, when he comes on the scene. Dear friends, okay? All right? And all government is established by God. Absolutely. Okay? Absolutely. You read in Hosea, uh, chapter 8, verses 1 on to verse 5. And even in, in Daniel, chapter 2. Let's go to Daniel, chapter 2, really quickly, just as a, for a reference here. Verses 20 and 21. Okay? Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. Verse 22. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth that it, he knoweth what is in the darkness. And the light dwelleth with him. Okay? Nothing happens without God say so. God has allowed Satan to run rule over this world. Okay? Absolutely he has. And just like America, King Charles now is being set up for judgment upon England. Just like that macaroni guy in France. Okay? And so on and so forth. Because the stage is being quickly set for the revelation 
the star of the show to come on the scene, on the stage, that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? And ultimately, watch that video in the description box. Ultimately, these nations that are to, on the earth today, that are building towards the star of the show to come on the stage, the son of perdition. What is their ultimate end? Revelation chapter 17, verses 13 and 14. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them. For he is, for he is, Lord of lords and king of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Another dispensation, obviously. But that is the ultimate end of this. Okay? Is America going to be here? Um, I don't know. But the nations that are being set up right now, okay, that are right now, are, being, are there to set up that man of sin, the son of perdition, when he comes onto the scene. And their goal is to turn everything over to him. Watch that video in the description box. Okay? All right, let's continue, because I, I don't, <laughs> let's continue. With the king's family, we mourn the loss of his mother. And as we mourn, we must come together as a people to support him, to help him bear the awesome responsibility that he now carries for us all. We offer him our loyalty and devotion, just as his mother devoted so much to so many for so long. And with the passing of the second Elizabethan age, we usher in a new era in the magnificent history of our great country. Usher in a new era. Oh, a new era. Yeah, whoever wrote that speech did really well. A new era of peace and prosperity, huh? A new era of, uh, with a new, she didn't say peace and prosperity, obviously. But uh, right away, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1, on to verse 3. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Oh. Exactly as Her Majesty would have wished, by saying the words, God save the King. So there you have it. Now, what, what is the ultimate significance of King Charles? I do not know. I do not know. But I do know that now that England's got a king again, once again, and um, you watch the video in the description box. Um, I believe that it is, that the Lord can appear at any time and call us, excuse me, call us up at any time. I do believe that, okay? Uh, even a hundred years ago, eh, no, not so much. But now, the closer we're getting... The, you know, the farther that we're going along on this world, absolutely, absolutely. Unlike some uh, people, I believe that that man of sin, uh, the, excuse me, that the uh, Jews, as backed by that man of sin, the son of perdition, the Vatican, uh, will be able to get that temple up in no time flat. And that man of sin is going to be a Hebrew, and his visage, his visage, he is going to, I believe, I believe. Scriptures, I believe, plainly tell us that that man of sin is going to be a Hebrew. Okay? Because the Jews will not accept a Gentile Messiah. But number two, I believe, I believe that he is going to resemble the Roman Catholic Jesus in his visage. And a brother said to me, well, the Roman Catholic Jesus looks like a Japhethian. You're right. He does. There are some of, uh, of the Hebrew people that you would not know that they were of Shem, because they look as if they were of Japheth, but they're actually of Shem, okay? I believe that that man of sin is going to resemble in his visage, his face, he's going to look like the Roman Catholic Jesus. Is he going to have the beard and the long hair? I don't know, but his face is going to be the spitting image, his visage, I believe, of the Roman Catholic Jesus, okay? That's what I mean when I say that, so... 
Like I said, what this means in the grand scheme of things, I don't know. But what I do know is, if you're not saved, time is running out. So. All right, that's going to be it for this small video. Thank you for watching this. If you do, Lord, uh, Lord bless you, my brethren, sisters, and church of the living God. Please keep us in your prayers. Please, can I have a few of your prayers, please? I'm not doing well health-wise. Not well at all. So thank you very much, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.